it's interesting to hear a piece like this directly after a piece of Bach. <laughs> it, it, brings up the, it brings up the question of, of quality of a musical composition. And I think that when people are interested in Baroque music, they have to admit that they're going to play some music which is compositionally more uh, refined than others. So I think that it, what, what's, I think that the, the, the quickest way to the, to the solution of the problem is to realize that it's not such a great piece, but it can be really, really well played if you've mastered the fact that it's not such a great piece, <laughs> which means having things being messy. You have to, I think that as an interpreter, when you have a piece of music that's, that's, that doesn't have an enormous amount of finesse because the composer is not, does not have that much finesse either, but it's just something which is pleasant to listen to, I think that you have to engage as an interpreter in the sloppiness of the composer. Okay, this is all a very nice thing to talk about. The question is how to actually do it and, and get paid when it's over, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, but there's, I think that there's, there should be a, 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 a very, very conscious lack of ver verticality. That's what I mean by messy, because something can be messy just by being sort of off-handed it doesn't have to be messy as in unlistenable. But the question is how to make the messiness uh, listenable. Try again. I have a few, I have a few uh, uh, tips, a, a couple of recipes for you. I would begin, I would begin with, a, with, a, with, a, with, a, with a gesture. That, that doesn't have much musical content. I wouldn't be too artistic about it. I would be very childlike about it. Just as non nonchalant as possible. I would, I would move the second note to the left. You're a, bit, you're a bit too artistic between the first two notes. That, that's to say, you can't, it's impossible to give a naive affect if you begin by inhibiting the movement. And you have to, you have to do the same thing. You have to just kind of move. Boom. Pretentious. That's, that, that's, that's one way of making it sound even sloppier <laughs> than it is by, by, by adding a note. Okay, but you see, you see the idea. It's, it's, something, it's something that's in the brain which you, which you just force, which you force out musically. Try again. More? Can you um, wait more at the phrase? Tiam, tiam. Because he played a short note. Because he's, he's more onto the comic effect of the thing than, than you are. It's not that it's necessarily comic, but it's just not extremely serious. So if he goes tiam, bum, then you have to wait and be fascinated by, by this more or less ridiculous, irresponsible articulation that he made, since he's on <laughs> to the fact that it's compositionally weak. But this is just this is just a way. It's a way of of of, of thinking musically. Uh, try it again. Too 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 soon. You're you're early on yourself. You made the affect, and then you wreck it with the with the next note. Deem um, Boom, just start the piece over again. And now move between the third and the fourth note. Dee, da, da, dee. Now that you're moving between the first and the second, it would be nice if you could also move between the third and the fourth. Just keep going. That's what I mean by pretentious. Do something which is very sort of modern traverso. That is absolutely that, 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 that's absolutely not what you did the first time that's the successful version it's very much it's it's more galant if you actually don't mess around with it so much okay last time promise <laughs> Now, 
but no, but then you have to stop, then you have to make a large arpeggio, and then you have to wait. You have to think of it like music, which is one of the most obnoxious things I say, but I have to, I say it all the time. It has to, you have to think of music. <laughs> And don't think of anything else. Don't think of being professional. Don't think of being together. Don't think about vertical. Don't care if there's a public or you're just practicing in your room or playing for friends. Just, okay, just from the, from the, from the, from the, from where it takes up again. Wow. Where you play the long arpeggio and where you wait and then when you, and play. Okay, that's very good what you do because now he starts the detail. That's where he goes. For him, it's, for the composer, it's kind of a variation without being a variation. But you see the difference between the very beginning of the piece and this new phrase. He changes gears completely. But that's what makes all of these second-rate or even third-rate Baroque composers interesting because they're always up to something. But you have to be able to spot it. And if you can spot it, you can actually get it, get it out. One thing about spotting things that I think is interesting is that I think that at this time in the history of music, I think that even amateurs and certainly professionals, I think they could spot these things when they were sight reading. I think that the whole idea of prima vista, of, of yeah, just picking up a piece and reading it for the first time was to translate it immediately. It wasn't to learn the piece and put in all the fermatas and all the fingerings and all the flatements and, and argue what's together and what's not together. I think it's something that people could actually see on the page when they read the piece for the first time. There's a big difference about being a good sight, re uh, being a good sight reader and actually be able to get up in front of the public and to sight read a piece that you've never played. And I'm sure that that was done with especially this kind of, 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 of repertoire in the, in the 18th century. Okay, from there again. That note is a bit long. If, if you want it to be slightly long, it's okay, but you have to, you have to judge it. You have to have an end. A recorder can't do a decrescendo. Um, and I'm a failed recorder player, so th that's the reason, uh, yeah. A, a, a even a failed recorder player can't do a decrescendo. But the magic of the traverso, uh, which is actually the only thing that I do like more about the traverso than the recorder, is that it actually can make a decrescendo. But it, the, the problem with traverso playing, or players even, is that the, 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 the end of the note is not always, they rely too much on the decrescendo, and the note t tends to, uh, lots of notes at the ends of phrases tend to have very ragged ends because they don't want it to sound like a recorder. But you don't have to worry, it's not gonna sound like a recorder because it's being held in the wrong direction. Uh, it's been held in another direction. <laughs> <laughs> right, it's being held in, in another direction. So, but, even, even if you make a beautiful traverso effect, even if you make a beautiful decrescendo and everything, it has to end at some point. You have, to, you have to know exactly where you want the silence to occur. Try it again, just for that. Nice. Stop before them. I would. The, the, what he's writing on the page. What he, he's expressing neurosis. So you have to express neuroticism. <laughs> you just have to do. You you have to just. You have to do things that you don't want to do. Basically, you have to do things that will make this relatively weak composition just grab all the audience and say, "Wow, that's such a such a great piece." Try it. 
And you have the advantage of having a harpsichord player who is slightly all over the place, but in a good, in a good <laughs> sense. I mean, he just plays, plays. It's just fun to play, beautiful instrument, nice people to listen to, big, healthy flute sound and everything like that. So you don't have to worry about him. And if occasionally he distracts you by being a little bit like that, it doesn't make any difference. It's a duo. It's a duo. But that, 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 that arpeggio, the one that went that also, has, that also has to end somewhere. Because if not, it's too bordelique. How do you, uh, it's, too, it's, it's too messy, in a good or bad way. Even in a good way, it's too messy. You have to stop it somewhere. Because if not, you're just taking up too much, too, too much ear space. Same? How long, can you, how long can you keep the high note? I mean, this is a real traverso note. This is the kind of note that a traverso player is proud of. It's a, it's a, it's a note of, of noblement. Chic. It's not savage enough. It, it has to be noblement but sauvage. It, a noble <laughs> savage is what it has to be. Or it can be a delicate. It can, it, it can also be a tendre. But you've got to do, you really got to do something with it. Because if you don't, they won't hear it. I'm not saying that you're wasting your time or you're wasting their time. I'm not making any value judgment. All I'm saying is, it, is that it won't be heard. Maybe it's not the greatest idea to double her, 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 her melody yeah, notes in the, in the in, I mean, to, to hit one note that she's hitting at the same time, that's acceptable. Mm -hmm. We all make mistakes, right? But to hit, to, but, but to do it, to, to hit two melody notes at the same is a bit distracting. Um, well, it's bad compositionally, for one thing. It's, yeah. it's, it's unwanted unisons. Nobody wants, everybody's always complaining about unwanted octaves, but nobody ever complains about unwanted unisons. And like I said, it's not because it's not in tune, or it's just, it's just, not, it's just not necessary. You should figure out another note to have in the top of the realization. Okay, for time, can we go to whatever of the movements left? We will, we will only have room for one, so you should choose knowing that I feel that slow music is always more interesting than fast music. <laughs> but you can, but you, can make, you can make the, if you want to play a fast movement, that's also okay. I think mean, you want it in doubles, so That's fine. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> fine, okay. And we won't do the repeats for the time. Okay.
thanks. Um, uh, it's, it's interesting, sometimes uh, the verticality between the, the Dessu and the Bas should actually just not be there. And basically, you have to decide, sometimes you can be in front of her and sometimes you can be behind her. You can just, it's like having two hands not quite together on the harpsichord. Um, because you have to remember that it's this, this is exactly like the right hand of the harpsichord. It's the chant, it, the, the, sorry, I forget whatever language, the, it's the, the melody, the melody line. And so you have to decide where you want the melody to, to be with the bass or before it or after it, all of which is legal. Um, the, for, for instance, the one, the, the, the sort of crazed one, the Um, you have to be behind her. You have to be, she has to be, she has to go first. Can you try that just to see yeah. if it's possible to do it? But one has to be, the, the thing is, is that you have to be comfortable with it. You have to be comfortable doing it and you have to be comfortable hearing it. Because if you're uncomfortable with it, it's not worth doing. What's worth doing is getting comfortable with it. But sometimes you need somebody standing there saying, come on, come on, you can be comfortable with it. You don't have to be afraid of it. Just, just try the, the chromatic one. Again, one more time. Can you, can you be, can, can you slur them very slightly in two to make them even more neurotic? Mm -hmm. as, as though they're, 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 they're intended as decrescendos. And if you go, you'll lose it. You have to have, you have to be, you have to be early on your own first note. Watch. I mean, a, 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 a real conductor, right? A modern conductor, that's one. What if that's one? What if you have a conductor that has a fantasy and who was actually born, has been going like this since they were four or five years old? <laughs> that's the difference. Hold on, I'll give it, and. But that's how you get suspicious musical movement. You integrate it into your body and to your gesture instead of this. It's just too mechanical. Okay, last time, do it, do it on your own and help her. Mm, that's, too, that's too disorganized. You, you can't be that disorganized on, on the first note. You can be that disorganized afterwards. But you have to get off to something which is recognizably musical. <laughs> Try it. Use, use the resonance, use the resonance of the, lo of, the long, of the lowest note. Get the sound that you want, even if it takes a moment in the embouchure, but get the sound that you want and hold it until you've got it, then you can let it go. But get it first. Get the resonance first before you let it go. No, it wasn't long enough the, the, before the octave. Warm. You can. You have to take a lot of time. Try it again. It's worth. It's worth doing it over and over again. It doesn't bore me at all. Don't worry. Okay. Now. I would take a faster tempo there. I do something uh, as a, a harpsichord player, as a chamber musician, and as a conductor, which is very, very strange compared to normal, everyday, mainstream, mainstream Baroque <laughs> ways of doing things. I usually, something that most people think that I'm doing is a rubato is actually not a rubato, but only the people that I work with actually know what the system is. It's not a rubato, it's a tempo change. It goes faster, 
for one phrase and then you either have an a tempo to the slower tempo or it keeps going. So I would take a new tempo. It's a tempo segundo. Try it just to see what it feels like oh, from, from the beginning. The beginning is much, 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 much better. It's just something, that, but that's what coaching is about. I mean, I coach my own ensemble. Then I leave them alone if they're lucky. <laughs> but but I, I, I insist that, uh, that the idea comes out. I'm just making a proposition of something that, that I'm hearing acoustically and rhetorically. Try again. Fine. Faster. Back down. Careful. <laughs> no, 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 no. At some point you can go back to, you can resume your original tempo if you want. But just that idea of moving forward when it moves, that's to say when the movement is not bizarre or, or, or suspicious, when it just moves forward, you can take a tempo which is, which is slightly faster. Can you play just the very first, the, 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 the original, just the minuet at the beginning? I'm trying to decide if I would like it to hear, I, I would, I'm trying to decide if I would prefer it slightly faster, but I wouldn't pr prefer it slightly faster. I would prefer it at the exact same tempo, but with a few accents taken out. There are too many notes which, which are too professionally placed. That's to say the nonchalance, if you, if, you, if you take away a certain number of placements and accents, uh, try it again, try it again. Just a more naive thing. Think, think like a, a six-year-old's birthday party. Nice. Go on. What exactly do you want to do with the repeated note? I would give more personality to the repeated note. I really have this hang up about repeated notes. <laughs> There has to be a perfume, a seasoning, to every repeated note. It's much, much better, I think. Okay, go, and go on to the first, to the first double. I have another question. Do you want the same tempo or do you want to take another tempo? There is, I, I think that there's a, uh, what's, how, what's the expression for that? Um, received wisdom <laughs> tells us all the variations and everything. You're, one is a professional musician, don't mess around too much. So basically you just, you keep the tempo. You keep the, temp you keep the same tempo, it's variations, don't complicate things. Bird pavan, bird galliard for a harpsichordist. You know, don't don't mess around. Just make sure that everything is professional and sounds planned. But it's not tempo. No one, people don't talk about when they when people say tempo relationship. It doesn't mean the metric. It doesn't mean the the the, the, the mechanical uh, mathematical value or the metronomic value. It's a relationship, and only. A musician can decide what the relationship of the tempo is going to be to the last. I was teaching the Goldberg Variations last year uh, in, a, in, a, in a master class and I noticed that the received wisdom of the Goldberg Variations is to play each variation and this has been validated by all sorts of harpsichordists, by all sorts of pianists and I don't buy it. I think that you have to be able, I don't know how it's possible to be considered an authority on Baroque music if you refuse to change affect, 
in a variation set where, where the whole idea is to change affect. If you have to regulate something, you have to trust yourself. Never ever let a bad musician tell you what to do. That's one of my secrets. But the other secret is always let a better musician tell you what to do. I, I did it all my life. I learned from a singer. I learned from a gamba player. I learned all sorts of things by just trusting people. I knew that they were better musicians than I was. Period. They still are. <laughs> uh, anyway, that, but that's, the, that's the, the, the question. If you want to vary, if you want to slightly alter the tempo, slightly, you have to know what you're doing. And you have to know how you're going to go from one piece to the next, uh, to, from one variation to the next. It has a lot to do with the last piece, uh, with, with the last note of the proceeding. That has to be perfect, because if you want to change the tempo, then you have to have, uh, try it, just between the, the, between the, the original minuet and the first uh, double. The first note is a little bit too isolated. <laughs> it's, it's, too, it's too long. It's too long for your articulation. Don't give a ragged end to the first note. It's too important. It's a sort of trumpet kind of note. It announces something. imagine it's slightly slower. I can imagine that you want it to go into a sort of even further, more of a pastoral, more of a tendre. Can you try it doing it a bit? Just more detail and, and, and just take a little bit more time for the affect. Not to hear the detail. The detail will happen instantaneously if you change the affect. But if you really want to change the affect, the slightly slower tempo will click it in immediately. Again. But stay, 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 stay in the slow tempo. Don't, 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 don't try to get back to an odd tempo of, of the previous variation. Last, last thing, just to do that to end. Delightful. as though the piece is over, which, which it now is, unfortunately. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>